Okay, we're on page 74 of the notes borrow, and we're continuing on with basic probability. Um, we've been working with completely independent events. Now we're moving to something that's dependent. So once again, probabilities, uh, the probability of the impossible is zero or zero percent. And the probability it's guaranteed to happen is one or 100 percent. All probabilities range from zero to one inclusive. And don't forget, probability is the chance the things you want to happen compared to the total number of outcomes that there are. So a bag contains three A's and five B's. What's the probability of drawing two A's at the same time? So first off, I'm just going to make a list here. This is what they're talking about. I have A, 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 and then B, 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 B. And they want to draw two at the same time. By the way, this is a dip, this is a little bit odd. We don't take two at the same time. Whenever they say take two at the same time, what they really mean is draw twice without replacement. So draw one, then don't replace, draw another. So anytime they're saying draw two or three or whatever at the same time, they're saying drawing without replacement. Okay, that's what they mean. Now I'm gonna do this one on a blue tab just because I wanna make a point here. So first off, we're doing two things. All right, we're drawing twice. All right, so we're gonna draw, we want the probability of getting, drawing an A and then a probability of drawing a second A. Well, first off, we have three A's and five B's. So the probability of drawing an A right here is three out of eight. So that was easy. And you're like, okay, but we didn't replace them, so they're not independent. And you're right. We didn't replace it, it changed. We now only have two out of, um, um, and we have, so we only have two A's left, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven things left in the bag. You're like, but Mr. Spencer, we can only multiply them if they're independent. And that's correct. You are right. You can only multiply things if they're independent. But a situation like this is essentially like having two separate bags. It's like having a bag that had three A's and five B's and having another bag that has two A's and five B's. So when you draw them, it's basically drawing from one bag and from the other bag is independent. So in this case, three eighths times two sevenths is our answer, and we would be done. All right, so I'm just gonna write that down over here. Three eighths times two sevenths. And it's because, yes, the events weren't independent, but when we made the adjustment, we changed it. So in other words, the probabilities changed. It was no longer three eighths times three eighths. It was as if we had two bags, one of which had eight letters with three A's, Another had seven letters that only had two A's. Okay, we're gonna do one more similar to that. What is the probability of drawing a B on the first draw and then drawing an A without replacement? So once again, we're doing two things. I'm gonna do this last one on the notepad as well. Okay, so when I look at this, they said they wanna draw a B and then draw an A. Well, right now, the probability of drawing that B is going to just be one, two, three, four, five out of eight, so five eighths. We drew a B, so it's gone. So now, since we have a second bag, and that second bag has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and only um, four Bs. Oh, but we're not drawing a B, I'm sorry. We're drawing an A, that was bad. All right, so we're drawing, we, the probability of drawing a B on the first one was five out of eight. Now we wanna draw an A, there's three A's and there's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so three sevenths. So five eighths times three sevenths. So what's the probability of drawing three A's in a row without replacement? Well, one, two, three, four, five, we're only drawing three, so I only need, I don't need those two, I just need this one. Well, the probability of getting the first A is gonna be three out of eight. 
and our bag had A, 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 B, 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 B. Well, that was three out of eight. Oh, now we see we have two. But we also decreased the total number of letters. All right, and now we're down to one A. So three eighths times two sevenths times one six. Probability of drawing two A's in a row without replacement and then drawing a B. All right, so once again, A, 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 B, B, one, two, three for the two A's and then a B. So the probability of the first A is three out of eight. Probability of the second A is now two out of seven. And the probability of now drawing a B, we have one, two, three, four, five Bs and six letters is five out of six. Letter E, what's the probability of drawing an A, replacing, replacing the letter, then drawing a B? Very key here. We put the letter back. So A, 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 B. Probability of drawing that first A, three-eighths. We put the letter back, so we still have five letters, I mean eight letters. Five of which are B, so three eighths times five eighths. And what's the probability of drawing a B, replacing the letter, then drawing an A? Because we're, um, so we replaced it, all right, so the probability of drawing a B is five eighths. And notice the probabilities between this and the last one didn't change. All we did was just swap the order. So a complementary event, that's the probability an event will not occur. So if they ask for the complement, and usually it's gonna be done with this or possibly with a negative one sign, it means one minus whatever the event is. So the probability of A complement is the probability of one minus the probability of A equals one minus the probability of A. So what's the probability of not rolling a three on a six-sided die? Well, let's look at our, our sample space. We can roll a one, two, three, four, five, six, and not three means one minus one, six equals five, six. And sure enough, one, two, three, four, five answers that are not three. What's the probability of not drawing an ace from a standard deck of cards? All right, so let's real talk, talk very quickly about card decks. And I probably should have made this up ahead of time, but I didn't. So you need to make a note to yourself um, because in probability we like cards. I mean, it's one of the favorites. Um, so 52 cards in a deck. We have what's known as four suits. The suits are hearts spades, diamonds, and the last one is clubs. Well, 52 divided by four means we have 13 in each suit. Each suit is made of two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and then a jack, a queen, a king, and an ace. And depending on how you're playing, the ace is either high or the ace is either low. But two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king, ace. And that's generally the order. Um, ace is usually the largest, but sometimes we use it as the smallest. All right, so those are the cards, and you, you probably need to make a note of yourself if you're not a card player. What is the probability of not drawing an ace from a standard deck of cards? Well, 
each suit has an ace. So there's four of those. So not ace would be one minus four over 52. There's a probability of an ace equals four out of 52. So one minus four out of 52 would be not ace. Um, if I had to draw three cards with without replacements, what's the probability that none are aces? All right. So we had, I'm just going to, I can't write a whole deck out, but I'll say, you know what? We have four aces. What's the probability the first one um, is not an ace? Well, there's 48. out of 52. Now that's gone. And so now there's, it's not, that's not gone, but now that I did, there's 47 cards left that are not aces. Then there's 46 cards that are not aces. And then there's 45 cards that are not aces. All right. I'm drawing only drawing three. Sorry about that. I drew four. So basically, I have 40 cards, 48 out of the 52 are not aces. But I took a card, so now I have 47 cards out of 51 cards that are not aces. Now I took a card, so I only have 46 out of 50 cards that were not aces. All right, if a student guesses on a five question multiple choice quest, choice quiz with four answer choices, what's the probability the student will guess at least one wrong? So basically, we have five blanks. I'll put them over here, one, two, three, four, five. This is an at least problem, so please don't forget about this. Wrong, wrong, wrong correct and we want at least one wrong whenever they say that whenever that whatever they ask for you're going to do the opposite so the opposite of wrong is correct at least means one minus so one minus one fourth one fourth one fourth one fourth and one fourth all right. And then finally, uh, a machine has four components. The probability that the components do not fail during the year are 0 0.97, 0 0.99, 0 0.98, and 0.96. If any co component fails, the machine fails, what's the probability that it fails? So if any component fails, that means if at least one fails, the machine fails. Well, this is the probability of not failing. So since we're talking about failing, we need to do one minus the probability of not failing. All right, one minus the probability of not failing. Hold on just a second while I'm making an adjustment. So in this case, we have one minus one, two, three, four not fail, not fail, not fail. And I have four blanks because I have four components. And uh, so this is 0 0.97, that's a not fail. 0 0.99 is a not fail. 0 0.98 is a not fail. And 0 0.96 is a not fail, all right? So the probability of not failing is the, um, and the probability of failing we have not fail, not fail, not fail, not fail. So if all of these don't fail, the machine um, doesn't fail. The machine works. But if I subtract it from one, instead of instead of not failing, I now have failing. So this is going to be equal one minus 0 0.9035. 
the 0 0.9035 is the chance that the machine doesn't work. One minus that gives me the probability that the machine will, will fail. So there's about a 9.5% or almost 10% chance that the machine will fail, and about a 90% chance that it won't fail. This section right here, probability doesn't fail. Subtracting it from one gives me the probability that it does fail. Once again, at least problems are probably the most challenging of all the problems in this particular unit. 